fairy tale. The stories are real. What they wrote about really happened. We have the ability to see what no one else can. You are one of the last Grimm's. The thing about Grimm's fairy tales, we might know them as happy endings, but originally, these aren't very pleasant fairy tales. You're a happily ever after guy. What we know is a very sanitized version. When you read the originals from the 19th century, they're really dark and very scary. You shouldn't have come back. They're certainly not a children's fairy tale the way we know them today. It sounds like what happened to Monson Creek Falls. Same deal, hiker and a bobcat. The bobcat wasn't wearing boots. The tales and the metaphors, they still hold true today. They're quite timeless. In the early 19th century, the Brothers Grimm, they were basically taking peasant tales, and they published over 200 fairy tales and close to 600 legends. My folks used to tell me stories about you guys. Scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. They were served as uh, warnings for young kids. Like, if you do this, this will happen. Your behavior, you know, has consequences. I want to go home. I told you, you are home. What's happening? <sighs> what do you know about Jaeger bars? What am I, your personal Grimmopedia? Well, no, you're a Blutbod, and I'm assuming that Blutbod know about Jaeger Baden? I am uh, a reformed Blutbad, which in German translates to bloodbath. Well, how do you? How do I stay good? Through a strict regimen of diet, drugs, and Pilates. We've got a lot of uh, creatures from the German Grimm's fairy tales. We got, oh, hexen beasts, which are these beautiful young women who turn into absolute heinous witches and are evil. We're going to be seeing the Pied Piper, Hansel and Gretel, uh, Rapunzel. We've got the Zygavolk, which are, they're these uh, goat men, basically. That's where the term, like, that guy's a goat came from, who just are complete womanizers. And we have Jaeger bars. I think Jaeger bars use these for disemboweling. Now I'm hungry. It's a little bit of everything. Action! Nick, I got something here! It's also very exciting that the story itself takes place in Portland and that we're actually shooting here. It'll really help enhance the storytelling. The place has, you know, six different weather patterns in a day. We're all from Los Angeles, so we never see rain. Over here, we have Connor. There's just this built-in beauty, and these trees are just extraordinary. If you stand still for an hour in Portland, you're going to be growing moss on your back. I couldn't be happier. I consider myself very lucky to work here. But, like, the setting is so imperative. It's spooky. There's trees that grow out of water. And, of course, all the green and the earthy browns. And it adds such a wonderful element to the show. 